Good evening, everybody. Uh, don't worry, you've got plenty of time until service actually starts. I just wanted to let you know we're going to be doing the pre-service a little differently today. And so instead of drone footage and instrumental, it's going to be a series of Christmas hymns sung both uh, by groups of people, both locally within our church and across our denomination. I hope that you will enjoy and uh, sing along and enjoy some Christmas hymns. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And let nature sing, and let nature sing, and let nature sing. Baby 
Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. I'm glad that you came to join us, and don't forget this is a communion service, so try and have some of your communion elements ready. But uh, why don't we join together with the lighting of the Advent candle and the call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O family of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nation, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and all the peoples in his truth. Merry Christmas, everybody. Sorry we can't all be together, but we can enjoy Christmas similarly. Thank you very much. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We missed you. Hope to see you in 2021. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us. That we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set the flame. Okay. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation. affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. Okay, and that's when you turn that on. Join us in a Christmas affirmation. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming had been prophesied. The same Jesus lives in us today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete. And our peace is sealed. Rejoice, our Savior is born. A Savior is born indeed. Joy to the world. Greetings from Linda and Steve. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and please stay safe. And we pray for a very prosperous and happy 2021. I really miss seeing all of you on a regular basis, but I still think about and care about you. I wish everyone a joyous Christmas and hope for the new year.
Hey everyone, it's Steve and Diane Arndt. We're here to say that we miss everyone very much and we want to wish you now a very Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let's join in with the prayer of invocation. We celebrate your coming to this world, Lord. Taking on our brokenness and lifting our heads up from the darkness to see the light of God again. Be born in our hearts again this season so that we too can go into the world and show people that your love is still in flesh through us. Amen. We're the Browns. I'm Ron. And I'm Katie. And, and we, we wish, wish you a, a Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. And look forward to seeing you in the new year. Hopefully it's 2021. Yes. <laughs>
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news for great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a shame, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And the suddenly there was with the, the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he fears. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see these things that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this. And all who heard it were amazed at what the servants told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to let you know that I miss you all very much and I'll be glad when we can have church together in the same building and see each other again. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a perfect health and prosperity in the new year. Merry Christmas from Carol and Marv. We wish you all the best as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of your Son. Thank you for new life, both here on earth and in the realm to come. Lord, in a time of joy and it seems I spend a great deal of time mourning, and I know that I'm not alone in that. In a time of togetherness, I know I spend a great deal of time on my own, and I know I'm not alone in that either. Lord, be with those who are having Christmas on their own this year, whether that is by choice or by necessity, by COVID or falling out, or lack of family. Be their family, be their comfort, be their joy. I ask that you come on each of us in a special way, that this Christmas we encounter you in a simpler way but in a truer one. Show us a side of Christmas that maybe we have forgotten, Lord. Just a baby born in a feeding trough, yet somehow Savior to all. Be our Savior from our world, from our doubts, from our fears, from ourselves if necessary. Bring us to you and make us new to be more and more like your child Jesus. Amen. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We miss you guys. We love you. Stay safe. Hi, we're the Kirsches. I'm Paul. And I'm Karen. 
We are sure missing all of you at church and hope that we can be back together soon. Until then, we want to wish you a blessed and merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Three times in life that family and friends really gather together. Weddings, funerals, and giving birth. I knew about weddings and funerals, but was really unprepared for how many people expected to be part of a birth until we had children of our own. When we had Shirley, it was the first time we had seen many of our family members in years, but they all flew into San Francisco to help with the baby, to see her and hold her and make sure Naomi was all right. We literally had a waiting list and were scheduling people for time slots. There was so much interest. <laughs> and that, that's modern era. I can go back a few hundred years and that event would have been magnified even more. Before the advent of hospitals and modern medicine, a woman's best chance of surviving childbirth was to have as many experienced women present and helping as possible. The other woman of the family would flock to the mother-to-be's house and there, be there sometimes for months. 
until after the baby was born and the mother was recovered enough to look after everything again. This wasn't merely some optional thing. This was how you made sure your daughter and grandchildren survived. You went to help. It, it was when a woman got to visit with family and have freedom, had authority. It was sacrosanct. Even older girls would come along to watch the birthing process and learn from helping out on easier births within the family. Everything came to a screeching halt except gathering together as a collective, as a family, when someone was pregnant back then. So when Mary found out that she was pregnant, it makes sense that she would run to Elizabeth's house, her relative, who had just found out that she was pregnant as well. The first taste that something is wrong in this story, however, comes when Mary leaves Elizabeth's house after three months or so, but before the baby was born, right when all the other women of the family would be gathering in support of Elizabeth. Normally, Mary would have been a part of that as well, but not this year. This year, she left instead. The next time we hear from Mary is, uh, is about nine months pregnant and traveling in a strange part of the country with a man who wasn't her husband. Now, none of this is how it was supposed to be done. Mary should not have been alone, even with her betrothed, until after marriage. But the bigger picture is that Mary should not have been traveling. She should have been at home surrounded by family and feeling all the love and support an expectant mother could possibly receive. There has never been a census that required fiancés to travel to someone else's hometown. Mary was not in Bethlehem because she had to be there. She was there because she had no place else to go and no one else to be with. This wasn't the welcome she had always dreamed of. This wasn't the love and family togetherness that she craved. This was abandonment, even shunning. And it got worse. Because one of the most fundamental rules of Jewish life was the law of hospitality. If a stranger was in the town square, you took them in. And if they were family, it wasn't even a question. They were an honored guest for as long as they needed. Yet here were Mary and Joseph. Joseph in his ancestral hometown, surrounded by hundreds of people that he could claim as family. And yet they had no place to stay. They had to turn to a local hostel. And even that place turned them away. Notice that as much as we quote it otherwise, Scripture does not say there was no room in the inn. It says there was no room for them. No room for the pregnant, unmarried, obviously sinful couple. No room for those people. We like to imagine that the town was packed and they just couldn't be fit in, but that's not what Scripture says. Scripture doesn't actually mention a stable either. It only mentions a feeding trough. And in a land with few trees, this was probably just sitting out behind a house or in the middle of a field, not a well-enclosed horse stall filled with fresh hay. And in the middle of the night, abandoned by all their family, turned away by strangers who were sworn to look after them, without shelter, without comfort, Jesus was born. Imagine that feeling. Uh, the difference between what you imagined and reality. An angel appears, tells you that a miracle is about to happen with you at the center of it, and then everything goes wrong. The only things that went right in the entire nine months was Elizabeth welcoming Mary and Joseph not abandoning her. Everything else fell apart until she gave birth in a field without family or friends. Joseph trying to midwife as best he could. This was the promised blessing. I mean, screaming in a field in the middle of the night alone. I love nativity sets. They are some of my favorite things, but they 
tend to cram three years of events into one scene. The Magi don't show up for years. The angels only appeared to the shepherds, not to Mary and Joseph, and the shepherds themselves don't show up instantly. In those hours of labor, without doctors or epidurals, in that blood and pain and fear, Mary and Joseph were alone. In those first moments holding the newborn Christ, they were alone. I wonder if Joseph was thinking that night, what have I gotten myself into? It was just a dream. How could I have let it lead me here? I wonder if Mary regretted submitting to God's will that night at all. While in labor, while struggling and in pain. I wonder if she missed her mother not being with her. If she felt alone. I think that is a feeling that many of us can relate to. Especially this year. On what is proclaimed as a holy, happy time, so many of us are separated and feel alone. Whether it is time that just causes us to drift apart, or physical distance, COVID, or broken relationships, there are many reasons we can feel and be alone on Christmas. And people keep saying it should be the happiest time of the year. Not always but it is always a holy time. We try and add so much to the Christmas story. Donkeys and drummer boys, extra angels, and everyone else we can squeeze in so that it looks more like what we think of as a holy, happy Christmas, filled with people and lights and merriment, warmth and joy. But in doing so, we run the risk of missing the key thing about the first Christmas. It wasn't holy because it was obvious or because it was joyful, because of angels or people showing up or gifts. It wasn't holy because of family or friends or recognition. It wasn't holy because of the lights or the star. It was holy because God was there. God showed it was holy in the silence, in the loneliness, in the tears, and the pain, and the confusion. God was there. Christ had come. One of the few gifts this year has given us is the ability once again to appreciate the importance of someone just showing up. And when neither Mary nor Joseph had family or friends or even a place to stay, God showed up in their arms. And it was a holy night. I don't know if this year you are celebrating apart or together with loved ones, whether you are joyful or feeling as alone and confused as Mary probably was that night. But I can tell you this, you don't need all of those trappings for it to be a holy night. Because what was true that first Christmas is still worth celebrating today. God shows up. Emmanuel, God with us. However you celebrate this Christmas, keep room for the holy, for what we really need every year. God to show up and be born in us anew. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, church family. We miss you. Hi, my name is Marjorie Babcock, and I would like to wish my church family and others who may be watching a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy start to 2021. Take care until we can meet again.
I'm Meredith Hoffman. I'm here with my dad, Maurice Jernstead. We want to wish every member of our church a blessed holiday season. We have an attitude of gratitude. So many positive things have happened this year. We're lucky to live in a first world country and truly blessed and hope that you feel that way too. And thanks for all of your calls and your cards, and Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Thanks. Hi to all my friends, my church family, my family, anybody who might be watching me and know me. I love you. I'm healthy. I'm happy. And I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Phil, join me now with celebrating the coming of Christmas with communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels cry out, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and found no room for them, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of being in a manger, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, 
you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may take the bread. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may take the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, Lord, with each other and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We Merry miss you Christ all. We love you all. God bless you. God bless you. Happy is the day that Christ was born. Christ was born. Christ was born. God is good. God all is the good. Time.
Good morning. I am wishing all of you a very merry and blessed Christmas and a healthy and happy new year. Hi, we're the Hammonds. I'm Joanne. This is Marlon and Arlene. And we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a blessed and safe and holy night tonight and day tomorrow. God bless you, everybody. See you next Sunday.